Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm so happy to be here with you guys to share what we have and get some points, uh, what you are doing so far. Uh, uh, my presentation is going to be on what we are doing on Ethiopia regarding on biotechnology. Uh, when I heard the previous researches, most of the institutes are the big ones and they're spending uh, almost uh, more than 50 years on this biotech and uh, that are our grandfathers or more than that, <laughs> maybe. So our institute is, uh, um, that might be the younger one. Uh, the overall uh, coverage of our discussion right now is going to be what's bearing, uh, what is working on and how the society responds for the work that we are working regarding on this uh, biotech. Uh, the picture you're seeing is the establishment birth for Betin. Uh, initially, its name was uh, uh, EBTI, but now it changes to Betin. Uh, so it is established in 2016. It's almost only six years, that means. So. Uh, what I'm going to uh, present for you is that what we're doing, we're trying to work with these six years. It's just to know, is there anyone before in Ethiopia or having idea of uh, biotech research is doing so far in Ethiopia? Anyone who have been collaborating or anything? You, okay. So you have some ideas on what's working in Ethiopia. So the, mostly when we say there is a biotech research in Ethiopia, people say, you starting it? <laughs> That's why I'm asking you guys if you have any uh, experience on doing researches in collaboration with any uh, universities in Ethiopia. So it's a, uh, a mandate on doing researches, uh, high impact researches, because uh, uh, small researches or initial um, Simple researches are doing in universities, higher institutes related to this uh, biotech, but uh, the mandate for Betin is on high impact researches uh, and having a product and giving service for a society uh, by using the product that we produce from our research. The other is uh, giving trainings, uh, focused technical and short term trainings. We give hands on trainings for uh, uh, undergraduate student, MSc student. Uh, on the molecular techniques or any uh, biological techniques on research. And now, last year, we get a mandate to give advisory role for to give advice or consult uh, different governmental and uh, private sectors. So these are the mandates that the institute is established. Uh, uh, there, before going to the, our research cycle, we have two directories. The first is uh, bio, the other is uh, emerging technologies. In the bio, we have this uh, medical biotechnology, agricultural biotechnology, the agriculture is into streams, plant and animal biotechnology. Uh, the other is health biotechnology and bioinformatics and genomics. And in the emerging, we have uh, nano uh, biotechnology, reverse engineering, and material science uh, directorates are working on the emerging side. So we work a lot of researches uh, in convergence with physical science and the biological science. Um, so how are we going to select our researches uh, if anyone comes to our institutes or how are we going to uh, deal with or select our researches? Is the first is on the site survey. Uh, our researchers or the institute researchers go to different sites of industries or agriculture zone uh, to see the problems there. So within that survey, we bring our question of the research and through review or some industries also come to our institutes to uh, do on some problems. And the other is, is a national request. As I told you, it is from governmental institutes. So uh, the government itself gives some uh, problems or research topics to be covered. Then the defense will go on, as uh, common in any research areas. Uh, the research work is, we work it in our lab or in collaboration with other institutes, as you know, uh, to work on this uh, biotechnology researches, uh, you need uh, budgets and everything cannot be covered within a single institute. So what we do is that 
we collaborate with other uh, institutes, international or national institutes. So some part of the work will be done in our institute. Uh, the other will be done in the other institutes. We don't stop because we don't have something. If we get something, we work it. If someone or other institutes have it, we'll uh, go there and do what we can do. Uh, then uh, it's, uh, having a result, so it's related to uh, science society first because uh, what matters first is to discuss on the results and uh, is that really uh, now ready to uh, deliver for end users or to disseminate to the end users. That's how our cycles works. Mm -hmm. Afterward, what I want to show you is that just simply exemplary researches that we are doing so far is not the only bit. It's just to highlight uh, what kind of researches that we are focusing on. Uh, maybe ours will not be that much complicated or uh, on the molecular level, but it's just to show you we are in the beginning of trying to work on researches that can be that can contribute something for society on from the biological basis. So this one uh, is a research working on uh, looking for yeast tolerant uh, ethanol tolerant yeast strains. Uh, why we are doing this is that while we uh, visit the sugar industries, there are different sugar industries in Ethiopia. So they, uh, after production of uh, this sugar, they got a lot of uh, byproducts molasses having 40% of sugar. So that sugar uh, will remain as a waste. So they try to convert it to energy farm and they produce ethanol in their industry. They have ethanol plants. So the strain that they were having and uh, used for ethanol production was uh, imported from India industries. So uh, they used it for around 10 years. After that, it was not effective, but they were initially used it. So uh, we try to look for indigenous yeast strains that can help them to uh, increase their production. Uh, these are the, just the picture in the culture that we have the, the yeast strain. So as you see, the, the one in, in the blue is that the one they have, uh, the yeast strain is the imported one. So it, it works only on 12% uh, of bricks concentration, that means sugar concentration in the molasses. So our strains are still working on 50% and 20% bricks. That was more than they, their expectation. So we are in the pilot work one now, and in the, after maybe six months, they will be applied to their industry. Mm. Ah, sorry. Uh, the other model research is, uh, is also based on the uh, isolation of these uh, yeast strains uh, for uh, local uh, uh, this is an, uh, traditional drink, uh, mostly com common uh, in Ethiopia. Uh, it is made up of uh, uh, honey, uh, pure honey, and it's, uh, after the fermentation it's going to be changed to alcoholic, and it is very common, but it was not a standard a standardized one or the production uh, step and fermentation step is different from uh, area to area, so we want that to commercialize it and export it. So it, it needs to be optimized and the standard have to be set for this production. So what we're doing is that do, uh, searching for uh, yeast strain, specifically from the honey. We find those strains from the original honey, so uh, now uh, it becomes uh, standardized and uh, uh, commercialized in the market. Uh, as you already heard, I'm a team leader for enzyme technology team. Uh, on the regarding on these enzymes, uh, we are on the startup. What I mean is that we are not producing this enzyme uh, in the large scale, but we are trying to produce them in the lab. Uh, we work on uh, uh, pro uh, protease, uh, amylase, cellulase, initially, but now we start working on phytase and xylanase because there is a big problem in the feed industries. They are importing a lot of enzymes that can be applied on the uh, feed substrate. So we're, we're trying to work on finding indigenous uh, uh, different bacteria strains the, that can be applicable on the enzyme production, uh, but we're not still on the uh, scale up. Uh, I'm sure after getting people here will collaborate on production of these enzymes and scaling up. 
after this, uh, some of the uh, designs or research that I'm going to present you are not focusing only on the biological system. I know that uh, most of us here are from uh, uh, biotechnology or biological science, uh, but, but not all the researches have not to be uh, based on the biological. What, we, what I mean to say is that uh, whatever the sources, what we want is to solve what the society uh, is in problem. So uh, we try to convert different wastes from different industries uh, to the energy form. So this one is uh, the sugar industry used the bagas or the strew that they have after production of sugar for energy source and they burn it and change it to steam uh, and use it for kind of the industry energy source. So they have a bagasse hash produced in the uh, industry, so we want to convert that bagasse hash uh, to uh, produce briquettes uh, as a charcoal to be energy source. And also we design the material department design instruments that can uh, be possible or used to produce this briquette. And we train uh, uh, young people who have now a job to produce this briquette uh, to produce it and to commercialize in the market. Uh, this one is also uh, using the bagasse ash that's produced in the sugar industries for pr production of these uh, cement blocks for construction. The construction material cost is much higher in Ethiopia, so we're trying to replace the cement by this bagasse ash, so the blocks are already uh, starting produced. Uh, this one is almost similar to the prototype that's produced from uh, plastic wastes. So we try to convert the wastes that we have in the industries in different forms to be used as uh, partition board. This is for partition board purpose. The other is the, there is a lot of wastes in the coffee industries. As you know, Ethiopia produces a lot of costs and exports it. But in the production system, uh, process, there is a lot of coffee husk that is deposited in the industry. So these uh, uh, wastes have to be converted to uh, fertilizer. So simply we use uh, epigenic uh, earthworms uh, species to convert this coffee husk to the, the firm, uh, fer fertilizer. Then we train uh, young people in the area to produce this uh, fertilizer and to use it for their lands. That's how we're doing. This is uh, a clay. Uh, I think you have experience of eating maybe injera, Ethiopian traditional food, that we are eating it uh, three times a day, maybe. Uh, if we stay in here more than a week, uh, maybe I am not the one who's presenting here. <laughs> because we can't uh, live more days with, uh, without having it. So, but the production process or the material they're using for uh, preparing this injera uh, takes a lot of energy to be hot and to process. So we, what we, uh, the material department doing is that uh, changing the composition of the clay so they can uh, produce the, uh, make injera with little energy. This is just to show you that uh, mostly researchers are coming together and saying on the molecular level, on micro level, on enzyme. Or, but the, for a country like us, uh, it doesn't give a sense whether you say DNA or any. What the shit? So what, what are we going to do with it? You see, they question what they, their, their problem is that. Is that. So one side we do the, at the molecular level, the other side. We are always looking for what we can do for society directly that they can feel. Uh, the other thing that I want to share with you all is that we're trying to develop a bioeconomy, national bioeconomy strategy. Uh, we want to change the country economy to the bioeconomy. Uh, so we were part of this uh, Eastern Africa bioeconomy strategy development team. I was a member of that national working team. But when it turns to East Africa, Ethiopia will be out of it. So what, what we're trying to do is now is uh, developing our bioeconomy strategy. And because we think that we, we got a lot of things to work on this bioeconomy, the bio, uh, Ethiopia is very rich in the biodiversity. There's no question because the, bio the 
ecology zones are agroecology zones are very uh, different and within that agroecology we got a lot of biodiversity that we can be used as a source for bioeconomy. The government commitment is very high on working on the bioeconomy. We want to uh, change our, the system to biological system. Our uh, training institutes are a lot uh, in the country. Uh, around 38 universities working on this, by, um, giving a course by technology and related courses. So the train manpower are also available, even if it's not that much skillful. And indigenous knowledge, we're, we're thinking that every, uh, every science comes from the indigenous knowledge. So we want to dig out what the indigenous peoples have in their hands so to exploit what they have and change it to a product. So, we have all these uh, sources, uh, use manpower as much. When we're sizing is this, we're not saying that uh, we are, everything is in a straight line. We have a gaps on uh, funding, on awareness. What we mean by awareness is when you say Ethiopia biotechnology, everyone saying, are you saying GMO? <laughs> we were not interested, but biotech is not all about GMO. It's not allowed in Ethiopia. There is a bit gap using these GMOs. But the wild ones still have application in the biotech. And the biotech means a lot different from a GMO. So we're trying to create awareness uh, regarding on what we mean by economy, why we need it, what we have, and what is the advantage of using that. Uh, we're trying to use uh, social medias, uh, institutional medias, and the big medias also we used to uh, convince people what we mean by that. And also we, when we go to uh, farmers, we try to communicate them in the way they can understand. They never know what by economy is, but they, we just to, uh, discuss with them what they have and how they convert it and how it's going to be an uh, um, economic source for them. And ca uh, capacity for lab equipment and reagents, hard currency, of course there is a problem. But as I told you earlier, we try to work in collaboration with different national and international institutes. We're good on that. We think that we believe uh, we are good on collaborations. I'm sure uh, I'm going to have a lot of collaborators from here and to work a lot on this bioeconomy and biotechnology. Uh, so we collaborate with a lot of in institutes. Uh, and we're so lucky on that, having here a lot of people from different institutes having similar interest with us. So our total to our, our uh, all interest is doing researches from scratch or the complicated one, uh, the easiest one. What, what we try to work is uh, something what we have and looking for something better. That's what, what our uh, interest research area. And having a product, so changing uh, society well-being unless we reach to the society and for our institute especially, whenever you present something as a proposal, then what you have for the society. If it is for publication, you can keep it whenever you are in the universities. But when you come to national uh, research institutes, you have to have something to be given for the society, so the society have to trust us that we are there to do something for them. Uh, that's what I want to say. And thank you for your time in that issue. Thank you very much.